Hello, this is Dr. Katie Bailey, and today we're going to be discussing stroke distributions. Our objectives, to discuss vascular territories in the brain, and to review CT and MRI imaging findings in acute arterial distribution infarcts. So to review the arterial vascular territories, the anterior cerebral artery covers the inferior parts of the head of the caudate and the anterior limb of the internal capsule, as well as the medial portions of the frontal lobes, the superior medial part of the parietal lobes, and the anterior part of the corpus callosum. The middle cerebral artery covers the lateral frontal lobes, parietal lobes, temporal lobes, and occipital lobes, as well as some internal capsule and basal ganglia. The posterior cerebral artery covers the midbrain and the thalamus, as well as the inframedial part of the temporal lobe, including the hippocampus, the occipital pole, the visual cortex, and the splenium of the corpus callosum. The superior cerebellar artery supplies the superior cerebellum, including the white matter. The anterior inferior and posterior inferior cerebellar arteries are more variable and can overlap in their coverage. The basilar and vertebral artery branches supply the medulla, as well as the pons. So example one would be an anterior cerebral artery or ACA distribution infarct. On CT scan, we can see subtle loss of gray-white differentiation extending all the way to the cortex. On the sagittal view, you can see again, there's subtle low attenuation in that right frontal lobe extending to the cortex. That is the ACA distribution infarct. On MRI, you can see even clearer there is abnormal restricted diffusion involving the parasagittal right frontal lobe, bright on DWI, dark on ADC, and you're seeing it's turning bright on T2. So this is a right ACA distribution infarct. And on vascular imaging, in this case it was an MRA, you see the paired A2 segments with an abrupt cutoff of the right ACA. Sometimes you can see it better on a more lateral view of the MIP images. Here you can see the left ACA continuing on its arch around the corpus callosum and abrupt termination of the right A2 segment. Example two is an MCA distribution infarct. So you see low attenuation with loss of gray-white differentiation involving the temporal lobe, part of the parietal lobe, as well as extending into that posterior aspect of the insular cortex. On MRI, you have abnormal restricted diffusion in these same areas, here showing predominantly the temporal lobe as well as the posterior aspect of the insula, showing restricted diffusion, dark ADC or low ADC signal, and hyperintense signal on flare compatible with vasogenic edema. On vascular imaging, you want to see where that MCA is occluded or narrowed. In this case, on the axial source images, you want to follow the M1 segments to the bifurcation or trifurcation within the sylvian fissure. In this case, you have bifurcation on the left. On the right, you see two branches. Unfortunately, one ends. So if you look at the MIP images, it shows it even better. There's an abrupt cutoff of a right M2 branch, specifically the posterior branch. Example three is a PCA distribution infarct. On CT, you see subtle low attenuation involving the left occipital lobe extending to the mesial left temporal lobe. Same thing on the sagittal view. You see subtle low attenuation involving the cortex of the left occipital lobe compared to the normal bright cortex superior to the area of infarct. On MRI, you have restricted diffusion involving the left occipital lobe extending to the left mesial temporal lobe with low ADC signal and hyperintense T2 signal, which is actually brighter in that mesial temporal lobe than it is in the occipital component of the infarct. So for this, you're gonna to go to the vascular imaging and on the source images, you can see here's the right PCA, left PCA, an abrupt cutoff of that distal left P2 segment. Better seen on the MIP images, you have abrupt cutoff of that P2 segment, which is the occlusion. Example four is a cerebellar infarct. These can be harder to see, so sometimes it's helpful to window the CT to show maximum differentiation between the gray matter and the white matter. You're looking for areas of low attenuation peripherally within the cerebellum, within the cortex. So you can see this low attenuation in almost a triangle shape involving that left cerebellar cortex. It's even lower density than the adjacent white matter. I find that it's helpful sometimes to look on the sagittal 
images. You can see it's almost round in this one, but the low attenuation stands out against the bright cortex. So that is a left cerebellar infarct. On MRI, you have abnormal restricted diffusion involving the left cerebellum, low ADC signal, associated hyperintense T2 signal compatible with the acute infarct. Then on vascular imaging, if you just look at the MRA of the head, that left vertebral artery, the V4 segment, actually looks reasonably okay. You don't see pica. You probably see an aica, but harder to tell. But when you look at the neck imaging, you can see that left vertebral artery is actually occluded at its origin with some reconstitution of flow in the V2 and V3 segments, as well as some flow in the V4 segment, which can be retrograde from the other vertebral artery. Example five, where you see one infarct, always look for two. So in this patient, you can see low attenuation with loss of gray-white differentiation in that right occipital region, kind of peripherally, mostly posterior temporal, kind of more lateral occipital. But don't be satisfied with the search. If you keep scanning up towards the convexity, you can see some subtle loss of gray-white differentiation with low attenuation in the cortex in that left frontal lobe. Then if you go to MRI, you can see restricted diffusion in that posterior temporal lobe slash occipital lobe with low ADC signal. And then where there's one, always look for two. So you actually have restricted diffusion in the right parietal cortex as well as the left frontal cortex with corresponding low ADC signal compatible with acute infarct. So when you see infarcts in multiple vascular territories, specifically bilaterally, think about a multi-vessel process. In this case, it was an embolic source. So this vascular imaging, I can't show you everything, but I wanted to show you that the neck vessels are widely patent and there was no stenosis, clot, narrowing in any of the intracranial vessels. So this was a cardioembolic source. However, you can get the same appearance if you have vasculitis that's causing areas of peripheral infarct, or sometimes you can even see the clots for the embolic source if they're decent sized clots and they include vessels at a more proximal location. Example six, I call this a PCA plus. So you see low attenuation with loss of gray white differentiation in the left occipital lobe extending to the left mesial temporal lobe, which looks like a pure PCA infarct, but always look for more. If you look here at the midbrain going towards the pons, you also have low attenuation involving the brainstem. This would be very difficult to see on the sagittal, but on the sagittal you can see that low attenuation with loss of gray-white differentiation involving the left temporal lobe and the left occipital lobe. So when you go to MRI, you see there is abnormal restricted diffusion involving a significant portion of that left occipital lobe, mesial temporal lobe, going to the midbrain, actually a little bit involving the right occipital lobe, which you couldn't appreciate on CT. It has low ADC signal. And if you image more superiorly, you can see there are actual multiple infarcts involving the left thalamus, as well as smaller foci in both occipital lobes. So this, is an appearance of a tip of the basilar infarct. So on this CTA image, you can see clot at the tip of the basilar and at the origin of the left PCA. On the sagittal CTA view, you can see that clot just at the tip of the basilar. And the same thing on the coronal view, that filling defect is the clot at the tip of the basilar artery, extending more into that left P1 segment, but showering some little clots to the right, as we could tell by the infarcts we saw. Basilar artery can have thrombosis or it can have areas of narrowing. In this case, this was partial occlusion of the mid basilar artery on the CTA. You can see there's filling of that distal basilar artery, but you see no filling in that mid portion. You can appreciate it better on the sagittal view, filling, no filling, filling. And on this axial view, it's right through the area where the basilar is severely stenosed slash occluded. It looks like there's probably a tiny little bit of flow, almost like a string sign. Easier to tell on conventional angio. Example seven is the medulla. You can have an area of restricted diffusion in that lateral medulla. So it's bright on DWI, dark on ADC. I did not show you a CT because it is very difficult to see it on CT. So we will leave it with the MRI. In this case, the vascular imaging shows 
severe stenosis of the right V4 segment. So you can see the V3 segment going to the V4 intracranially. Then you can see abrupt caliber change of that right vertebral artery. Here it is on the axial, and this was the cause of a lateral medullary infarct. Example 8 is a border zone or watershed infarct. You suspect these when you have a lot of low attenuation involving the white matter of the centrum semi-oval extending down to the corona radiata, especially if it involves cortex as well as you can see on this patient. So this bridges the frontal and the parietal lobes, predominantly involving that white matter. Here's another image, just a little bit higher. You can see that area of encephalomalacia involving that right parietal lobe cortex, this low attenuation extending throughout the white matter. This is a classic border zone distribution. You see encephalomalacia in the frontal and parietal lobes with white matter gliosis. And if you want to cheat ahead, you look at the T2 weighted image. Here you can see a nice left ICA dark on the T2 hyper intense on T2 on the right. So even on this one image, I can tell you there is occlusion of that right ICA. You'd like to confirm that with vascular imaging. So on the MRA, you see no flow within that right ICA, the cavernous segment or the supraclinoid segment, whereas you see it on the left. And this MIP image shows absence of the right ICA presence of the left ICA. Special case, if you have bilateral thalamic infarcts, this can be related to an infarct of the artery of Percheron, which is very difficult to see. It's just very small, but don't always think it's arterial. If you have internal cerebral vein thrombosis, it can also present with venous infarcts of both thalami. So keep both in mind. Always look at the internal cerebral veins when you see bilateral thalamic infarcts. When you think of dural venous sinus thrombosis is when you have a stroke in a weird location. If you have strokes in the posterior superior parietal lobes, um, it's a weird place. It would be a very peripheral MCA branch, which can happen, but don't forget the superior sagittal sinus is the venous drainage for all of this convexity area. So if you have a patient with a reason to be hypercoagulable, if they're severely dehydrated, if they're on medications that are known to make you hypercoagulable, they have a history of cancer, and especially if they have a history of clots, don't forget to check the non-contrast head CT. A dural venous sinus that is thrombosed is bright, almost like the patient had contrast. So this is actually clots in the superior sagittal sinus, as well as in the straight sinus. And here's the MRV. You see no flow within the superior sagittal sinus. Thank you for your attention.